This is the soldier blackfly, which Yvonne uh, just uh, mentioned to you. I just want to say flies in general. There are so many species of flies. And remember, they're from Diptera, two wings. All right, so some of the characteristics, 120,000 species of them. All right, when you think about 120,000 species, that is amazing. They, you can even find them in Antarctica, right? And all over the, the world itself. They are beneficial and they are necessary, even those that sting and bite us are. They control insect pests, which is very helpful, and they act as pollinators, recyclers, scavengers, and remember, only bees and a few wasps pollinate more plants than flies. So they are critical, all right, to production of our species. So let's get on about the black soldier fly. This is the black soldier fly. And what you're seeing on this film, I think there are two uh, fish in this container. Yeah, and yes. um, it's the larvae of the uh, black soldier fly. And it shows how they are uh, decomposing. Wow. The time frame here is like eight minutes or nine minutes that it takes them to do both of these fish, right? So when you get off of this, make sure you go take a look at that because that is quite impressive, right? That you'll see there. And we can go on to the next slide since we're not having cooperation yeah. here with YouTube. So some of the details, all right? They're also known as the privy fly. Back in the early 1900s, you saw privies all over the place. And those privies, um, this is a very nice looking one, but one of the reasons that they had the privies uh, and we talked about the privy fly was that if you've ever used a privy, you know it's pretty odorous. It has to be cleaned out, all right? But the soldier fly larvae do a lot to help that situation. And we're gonna learn more about that. They're very common in North America. In fact, they're common all over Australia, New Zealand. They're not very big. Well, they are, I guess. They're about three-fourths of an inch, and they resemble a wasp. But unlike a wasp that has four wings, they have two wings. So that's one of the things, if you're just looking uh, at them quickly, you can identify them. They have no functioning mouth parts, no stinging mechanism. You don't have to worry about bites. I found it interesting that they mate in midair. And you can see here descriptions of how the female uh, raises up her abdomen and the male comes in and uh, deposits sperm. Uh, and then she'll go away and she'll lay her eggs about 600 to 800 of them at a time. The larvae are the important part. So once the eggs start to um, hatch, they go through six instars. The larvae devour waste. So if you think about that privy, you've got lots of animal, human waste in there. So that was one of the reasons they were recognized as essential in privies in the early part of the century. They also reduce the levels of many bacteria. Chicken is the one they're talking about, but it's E. coli and salmonella. And they also do that in human feces as well. Uh, the conversion is so efficient that it's not a great deal of compost that's left. So they'll take a huge amount of it and all of a sudden you'll just have about 25% of that left at the end of their um, working on it. And again, it produces odor-free compost, it's clean. Uh, the dried larvae can be pulverized and made into fertilizer. I found this amazing myself. This little organism is used to um, take care, and we won't go down through the bullets just yet, just if you take a look at the diagram, you have the, the larvae, you have the waste, and this is how it's a waste treatment program. Uh, that is used. Many places used on human waste, cattle, poultry, abattoir, vegetable, uh, food waste, and you see all the larvae in the middle. That's what's the key component. And then on one side, it's showing how you can get um, the compost that can be used for soil amendment, or you can use it for fertilizer. On the other side, the larvae can be used for fish meal and for animal food, all right? Or they can be used as uh, materials added to those foods. And over on the left side, I just say they reduce the environmental uh, damage from large accumulations of manure. If any of you have been on a farm, which I grew up on a farm, you know how many cow pads you have across one little <laughs> section, all right? And the introduction of this little guy, all right, helps to calm all those down, all right? And, this, and take away the odor. So it's a pretty good, good little guy. Man. The next one. 
um, it scavenges on many kinds of decompose, decomposing organic matter. So it's not specific to any one thing. It, it will take care of almost anything within its site. Uh, large, powerful chewing mouth parts to shred and devour the waste. Okay, this is from a, a fly that has got no energy at all. It just sits there, all right, and just chews away. It doesn't fly very often. It has very poor mechanism for that. So it just sits there and devours waste and decomposes it. It's very happy at what it's doing. Um, so the odor, all right, can be uh, reduced along with any potential disease problems. And I love this figure, 75%. Right. That, that is jumping. Um, the, uh, it converts the nutrients into 42% uh, protein, 35% fat feed stuff in a process called bioconversion. I mean, you could do a master's thesis on this little guy. Um, the next one talks about uh, they can be fed right back to the animals that produce them, right? So if you've cleaned up the chicken, you can feed it right back to them. The cow, fish, the livestock, and all that can go right back to them with no harm to the animal. And then, of course, as shown over here, it can be ground up and fed to earthworms and redworms or second round or just as compost, all right? So you can make it even finer. The redworms, you have to be a little careful because the... the um, Substance produced by the larvae uh, is a little acidic and sometimes that'll destroy the redworms. But for the most part, if you're careful, it'll be fine. So it's dry, friable, and odorless. What a little grand thing. And it's high in calcium and uh, the content may halt or reverse the effects of many metabolic uh, bone diseases. Because if you look back up there, I think it was, it said 42% protein, 35% fat stuff. I don't have the figure up there, but I think it's like 25% calcium is retained back in it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And the biomass, uh, a large harvest of nutrients is worth about the same as meat and bone fish meal. And it's easy and economically transported. It's not as large as the other. So it's, it's a really sweet thing. So you don't, don't have to have concentrates of any other type. And this is showing the larvae. If you've gotten to see that video, you'd see these little guys reading, all right, around this, those fish. They are extremely valuable, all right? They themselves um, discourage any development of other pest flies, all right? So if the fly tries to lay its eggs in there by overposition, all right, it's very difficult for any eggs to be in that. And if they are, that's all ground up within it itself. So that's the second thing that's valuable about the, um, the way that they take care of pest flies. <clears throat> and they'll halt the development of it. And then last of all, um, and they do churn. That's the thing. You got to watch that video. The churning is really <laughs> amazing. And the last thing is they lead to substantial reduction of waste, right? That it's just a I'm sorry. That's okay. And these are just links. All right. Uh, and there are multiple links, but I did not know about this little guy. I just, I'm so impressed. Yep. There you go. I Question. did not know about him either. <laughs> I, that's amazing. Yeah. Any questions? There aren't, but I have one. Okay. I, are they just naturally occurring all over or do you have to introduce them? You can do both, all right? They, you can actually go online and you can buy your own uh, set of larvae and uh, use them for compost, or they are uh, available probably mostly in farms, um, crop areas, that type of area. Uh, but yes, they're just flying in the air as well. Uh, they have to be attracted to whatever organic matter they want to, to break down. I don't know about compost piles, but I would think they would be great in your compost pile too. But I know now, you can buy them. With, do they only like biological waste? I mean, like dead leaves and things probably aren't. That part, I'm, I did not see anything to that effect, Nancy. All right. All that I saw was on manure animal products, all right, that they were um, able to reduce. All right. Did not see it for uh, leaves and vegetable. Uh, vegetables, I bet they probably would, but just dry leaves, I'm not quite certain on that. I'm going to have to share this with my daughter who has chickens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she'll love it. <laughs> they have a lot of 